watching NAC Car Culture, your home of tough muscle cars, classic cruisers, and high-performance imports. Kindly brought to you by the good people at NAC Insurance, Ting Tools, and Mount Shop. Coming up in this episode, we gear up to go fast at Auckland's International Motorsport and go behind the scenes as Danum debuts his Drift Duty 2JZ BMW in round one of D1NZ at Manfield. But first, time to check out this week's Mount Shop feature car, Jason Fell's 69 Camaro version two, this time with twin turbo big block motivation. Yeah, it was about 11 years ago when I went out to the beach shop for the first time and there wasn't that many cars back then and I was looking down the street and there was this uh, yellow and black Camaro and I thought, far out, I like that. You know, it happened to be a mate of mine, Kevin Porteous, so I knew a guy that um, had one for sale out of Raglan, so I, I gave him a ring when I got back and I thought, hey, I've got to own one of those cars. They're just, just an awesome shape of the bubble guards at the back and yeah, they're just a very cool car. With a steady stream of automotive inspiration flowing through the doors at his business, Waikato Motor Trimmer in Hamilton, Jason wasted little time in transforming the Camaro into Phase 1, a slick, supercharged, big block weapon which graced the NZV8 cover back in 2008. But apparently even 750 horsepower at the rear wheels gets a bit old after a while. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those things you just got used to it. Um, and then just we're looking for something different, but I still love the car, so we thought, hey, why not change the engine and the drive change and have it a little bit different? So it had a 468 cubic inch in it with a Vortex supercharger. And um, yeah, it was about 750 at the treads. And a mate of mine that built the engine said, hey, why don't we do something different? So I said, okay. So he goes, oh, why don't we twin turbo it? So that's how it all started. He goes, oh, it shouldn't be too hard and too expensive to do. Yeah, right. It's one of those things that just got a bit out of control. Well, we've put a 540 uh, big end block in it. Um, Jake Edwards from over in Australia come back out to tune it for me and he's put, uh, done another carburetor set up for me so it's all blow through carb again. We've put some uh, twin turbos on the front of it, 64mm um, ones. And um, yeah, it's got BBO three uh, heads and everything on it so all the stuff in the engine is the best you can buy. We made sure it was going to be bulletproof. So now it's just the turbos that are the ones that are holding it back. It, it's just up at top end, it's starting to yeah, fall off a bit. So. You know, it could be plans later on to put some bigger ones on. Going from the supercharger, the supercharger was on straight away and the turbos got a bit of lag, but then when they get up and go, you're yeah, quite amazing, but yeah, it's all good. The 750 that we had at the treads before was good horsepower and it was fun, but uh, yeah, even going to this one with more horsepower, you've always want more and more for some reason. I don't know what it is, it's just one of those things, I suppose, because you can. But while whacking a few more numbers on the horsepower tally is good for getting people talking, driving it round town demands a lot more than just a once-over of the motor. And so the Camaro has changed dramatically from its first incarnation. The front end has had a rethink, a Caltrack setup joins the party up the back, and the 69 is now host to a Willwood braking package to help keep the 1,000 plus horses under control. It looks pretty much the same. Yeah, as I say, all we've done, even the bonnet's just changed to a bigger bonnet instead of the two inch that we had on it. Um, the cowl's a bit bigger. But yeah, even we went through and had to change it to a racing trans and, and um, nine inch strange diff and everything like that just to keep the horsepower. Even all the fuel lines, everything had to be changed from the back. So pretty much bigger than another fuel pump in the back. And yeah, I didn't want to break anything. So we thought by doing it all right from the start, yeah, we won't have to get in that track later. Despite the twin turbo big blocks suggesting otherwise, the Camaro is first and foremost a street car. The blow through carb setup makes for a well mannered plot around town when called for, while all the work underneath has tamed the car when gravity takes hold of Jason's right foot. Yeah, it's not too bad actually. I was quite surprised when we took it up to Crone. Um, going down the straights, opening it up and skidding up the wheels, I thought it'd be a handful and lose it a bit, but hey, it was really easy to drive. So it's real good power, just as it comes on, so you can you can have some good fun and you can control it nicely. It's all a street car from my family and everything, but hey, one day we might end up going down the strip and no doubt it'll go under the 10 seconds, so if it does, it'll have to have a cage in it, so, but hey, that's one of those things, one day we'll, we'll test it, but yeah, it seems to be good for a street car at the moment, so. 
Jason's Camaro is in great company. We've been lucky enough to point the camera at 10 of the country's coolest streetcars over the series, and together with our mates at NAC Insurance, we want to get you guys in on the action too. We're on the hunt for two viewers who could win the chance to get their ride featured in Season 2. It's easy to enter. Just jump onto themotorhood.com, upload a couple of pics and a video telling us about your car, and you could be joining our dream team when we hit the screens again in May. Get going. Still to come on NAC Car Culture, we stop in at International Motorsport in Auckland. And remember Danum's fresh drift duty BMW from a couple of weeks back? Well, the paint is dry, it's time to hit the track. You're back with NAC Car Culture. A couple of weeks back, we introduced you to Danum Templeman's Drift Spec BMW, built from the ground up to replace his battle-weary Toyota-powered RX-7. Every good project needs a deadline, and Danum's was late November for round one of the Demon Energy D1NZ Drifting Championship Series, the stage set at Manawatu's world-famous Manfield Raceway. We first cast our lens over the Beamer pretty much as the paint was drying. A tyre was yet to be turned in anger, and there was a bit of a final thrash looming to get it track ready. Well, fast forward three weeks and the car and crew are on site at Manfield, all ready, well, almost ready, to set the car to work in the pro tier of the championship. Big deal for us to make it here with a, with a new car. It's been in the build for a short amount of time. Um, and we're just, we're just really pleased, you know, no, normally when you have a build there's always things that go sort of wrong. We got a few little issues to sort out, but nothing that's going to really hurt us over the weekend. So you know, it's a it's a big achievement for you know my boys and Brendan to to build a car in such a short amount of time and come out here and be competitive straight away. So really pleased. Although Toyota's six-cylinder 2JZ was a familiar proposition, the rest of the BMW was all new territory, with one of the key talking points being the steering, an area that hamstrung Danum's experience in the RX-7. With the switch to the BMW platform, and with it aftermarket options like WiseFab's FD Legal Lock Kit make all the difference? Well, five laps is all they needed to say yes, yes it would. This being a little bit longer feels a lot more forgiving than the RX-7. The RX-7 was, was a lot shorter so you had to be sort of on it. This, you can be um, not lazy but um, not so snappy so you've got a bit more time to think about it. The whole steering issue uh, with the RX-7 is yes, uh, building this and going out and driving it and seeing what the steering does. Uh, yeah, it's, it's night and day, it's unbelievable and that's why I've got such a big smile on my face is how much nicer this car is to drive than the RX-7 so I, I couldn't be more happier at the moment so I feel like, you know, as I said, a bit of a rebirth to drifting and now see why everyone loves the sport, you know. In 2003, uh, and Manfield's one of, I guess, our iconic New Zealand circuit tracks. We've been here since the start, um, and you can see the cars back in the day. They were Seferos and S13s, and um, over the years, it's grown to a point where the drivers, um, and as I guess, a series organizer, and everyone involved, uh, are proud to be involved with that. And um, to have other drivers speak so highly overseas of the series when we go over there, when we don't even know, you know, they come over and they're like, man, we love D1NZ. Our drivers are very unique in New Zealand. Um, the variety of cars that we have within D1NZ um, and the flair they put on their cars as well. You know, I, I, I've watched a lot of series grow over the years and um, D1NZ has always had a real creative flair with the styling of the cars and the drivers and the personalities. That's a, a big part of it. Um, us as a series trying to really push boundaries with custom tracks, you know, uh, Bay Park, Tauranga, Street Rounds, Whangarei, um, really taking it to the people as well, what other normal motorsport doesn't do in New Zealand and a lot of series haven't done over the past. Nothing too custom about Manfield's track to kick the series off though. Drivers are judged on a section of track with points allocated for their speed through the course, the angle of the car in relation to its direction of travel, and showmanship, a place to pick up style points. 
With battle stages comes the added challenge of showing up the other driver. Leaving them behind works well if you're in the lead, while hugging their bumper or even passing is the ticket if you're the chase car. And of course, take a spin and it's all over. Normally what's going on in the head is when you're actually going to initiate or, you know, to make sure that you get started in the, in the right procedure and make sure you're in the right gear, you know, whether it's going to be a handbrake entry, a clutch kick entry or a, or a weight shift entry, you know, um, they change just variants of tracks, you know. With a slow speed track, you know, some people will handbrake or clutch kick. This one um, is a big clutch kick entry because you actually, uh, some were a, were a standing start, whereas this we're actually rolling around the corner, so you're actually gaining acceleration. So you, you, you sort of clutch kick and weight shift the car into that first big sweeper. And then, you know, you get it to what steering angle you want, and then you're basically looking for where the next clip marker is that you know to start rotating the car in the other, other direction. As you'll see through most of the day, the guys will get the cars dialed in, and it'll just become routine, and it'll just look, you know, Repetitory, they'll just do the same thing over and over again. You know, it all changes when you start chasing cars because, you know, they, they do things a little bit different and, and you've got to not catch yourself up. But, you know, fortunately, we've got a whole day to, you know, now practice and, and, and focus on chasing cars now. Tyres, uh, we're going through quite a lot of them quite quickly at the moment. We sort of get two good uh, runs out of our Westlakes and then it progressively gets worse until they're sort of non-existent. So we only, we only really have to get two runs out of it, you know, like a chase and a battle and then if it goes to a re-one we can put some more on. Just means a little bit of practice, um, you know, we get sort of two good laps and then when we go to chase someone, the car's not quite as, as good, so I've just got to be have that in mind that the car's going to be better when it comes to competition time. Like most motorsport, the pits and garages are a hive of activity between runs with running repairs, dialing and setups and fine tuning. Debuting a fresh car only ups the ante, and while they did have to quickly deal with a power steer failure during qualifying, everything else was all pretty much smooth sailing for the Danum Drift crew the well-prepped BMW requiring only minor tweaks. Brendan will go over the car and make sure nothing's going to fall off and everyone will check the fluids. You know, we'll discuss whether we want to make a change to the car. We have made a change. We made a, um, a gear ratio change in the rear diff. Um, and, you know, we made a slight tyre pressure adjustment. Um, and that's basically it. We're sort of happy with the, the, the rest of the car at the moment. You know, we don't need to make a shock change or a bar change at present. We're, we're pretty happy. Yeah, the, the small changes, or we talk about small changes, have a huge, huge effect on what the car's doing. You know, uh, you know, you're gonna be halfway through the corner and you're on the on the rev limiter and that, so you know you're actually using losing wheel speed. So you know you can either change the ratio so that it's taller, so it actually will rev, a, you know, so it's got more revs in that in that sort of particular area, and then. You know, if the tyres are going away, you know, the tyres are obviously getting too hot, so you, it's no different than circuit racing. You, you start off with a baseline pressure and then, you know, you, you work yourself when a car comes in, you know, when it started to go off and that. So you, you can, you know, make slight tyre pressure adjustments and that, and that changes the characteristics of what the car's doing, you know, through the corner and that. The car's got fantastic, you know, it's, it's doing everything right. Um, and I'm just coming to terms with it and getting more and more confident with it. And just, uh, you know, getting confident of throwing it around a bit more and, and you know, seeing how, how deep and hard I can take it into a corner. So, you're yeah, still pleased and really positive. All the boys are all happy and we haven't had any major issues so far. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get through the day un unscathed and, and end up the pointy end of the field in qualifying and then roll on tomorrow. Despite Mother Nature doing her best to mess with proceedings early on, when the smoke cleared on Saturday's elimination battles, it was Fanger Dan Woolhouse who steered his VE Commodore into the round one top spot, and with it, his first ever win at Manfield, ending Kurt Whitaker's strong charge in the V8-powered R34 Skyline. Danum's BMW debut landed him in 15th spot, with plenty of positives to take away from the maiden outing. From here, the Demon Energy D1NZ Championship moves to Tauranga's custom course in January. 
Head along to d1nz.com to keep updated with the action. And be sure to tune in right here on CRC Motorsport for full coverage of the Drift Series, a sport going from strength to strength in New Zealand. There's a track day on every weekend in New Zealand now. I think drifting would outshine any other motorsport as far as active competitors go in motorsport. And it's great that Motorsport New Zealand and, and the different bodies um, are recognising that. Um, and now it's just we're really making sure we steer the sport in the right direction um, and keep growing it in a positive way. Still to come on this episode of NAC Car Culture. One Camaro not enough for you? We've got International Motorsports take on the 69 Chev after the break. Welcome back to NAC Car Culture. Your home of tough muscle cars, classic cruisers and high performance imports. Okay, thanks to the team at 10 Tools, time for our last workshop tour of the year. And it's a good one. Welcome to International Motorsport. Okay, so this is the home of International Motorsport in Greylin in Auckland, uh, which is basically a one-stop shop for anything race car, muscle car, restoration, panel and paint, servicing, you name it. International Motorsport was founded by Nick's father, Lyle Williamson, down south in 1960, and their intense attention to detail, combined with high-tech know-how, has seen the business continue to thrive during the golden eras of New Zealand's motorsport in the 60s and 70s, right through to its current resurgence today. Living up to their international name, the team have also prepared cars and talent to compete in Australia, Asia, South Africa and America. Certainly a lot more glamorous from the outside. Um, there's a lot of hard work that goes into that, um, whether it be watching young talent and drivers coming through from a very young age, watching them from carts all the way through. But we're certainly pretty proud of what we've done over the years. It's not all foot to the floor stuff, however, although clearly driving experience is key no matter what the application. We've actually got a small go-kart division downstairs to then sprint racing with, say, the 991 that you see behind there. We've actually had oh, an excess of, I think it's now up to around about 38 brand new GT3 Porsches come through the doors over the years. Uh, and then endurance racing is at a big high now, so we've got two new cars, well, new this year with the Audi R8s. Um, which run in the one and the three hour series, both North and South Island. There's the GTR, which we built in-house here, which is a pretty cool piece of kit. We're pretty proud. It's one of the few GTRs that can run over an hour of racing anywhere in the world. Um, to anything and everything in between, really. International Motorsports Performance Classic Division have just finished off the 69 RS, although apart from a bit of styling inspiration, there's not a whole lot of the 1960s present. The Dynacorn reproduction body has copped some serious tweaking before receiving the modern version of a hot rod channel, lowering the shell over a heavily modified aftermarket chassis stuffed with a mix of custom built and chassis work suspension and steering, joined by Brembo braking components. Motivation comes in heavy helpings, courtesy of a supercharged 376 cube LS9, serving over 500 horses at just 6 psi to the strange 9-inch via a 6-speed auto. There's no denying it, the pro touring style Camaro is a landmark car for New Zealand, and the Chev benefits from a great deal of race car know-how. Oh, they're very interwoven. There's a lot of race car. Not necessarily parts, but thought processes. You don't have to be under the constraints of using antiquated parts that they used to come out with, which were pretty high tech in the 60s, but now you can get a lot better gear in your car. There's not too many bits in that car that haven't been bespoke built for it. It's uh, I've seen a few Camaros in my life, but I've never seen one like that in New Zealand, so we're pretty proud of that, and, you know, we're pretty humble with what we were allowed to do to it, that's for, that's for certain. You always want to be able to, to go to the nth degree on car builds. Sometimes you're allowed to, sometimes you're not. We've had 
two shakedowns with it, one being at Taupo Racetrack and one being at Hampton Downs. I think the car looks pretty good, but it goes even better, like it is outstanding to drive. Every person and every car is different to what its needs are, so I grew up with it, and I think sometimes we, in here I guess we forget with what, what we're lucky enough to be involved with, and then it's nice because every once in a while when a new customer or someone comes along, you get a fair appreciation for what we generally think is just walking in the door. <laughs> That's us for another episode and, in fact, this season of NAC Car Culture. If you've missed any of the action, be sure to jump onto themotorhood.com to check out all the episodes. And while you're there, don't forget to get you and your ride in with a chance to get featured in Season 2. And, of course, a massive thanks must go to our sponsors, NAC Insurance, Teng Tools and Mount Shop. For without them, this show wouldn't happen. Thanks for watching. See you in Season 2. NAC Car Culture was brought to you by NAC Insurance, Ting Tools, and Mount Shop. Thanks, team. <laughs>